Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let me be your tour guide in the world of the glorious truth-telling trombone. Why do we do that? Because composers apply very convincing statements of one of the sides of the possibilities of the trombone, and I'm sure everyone knows this one. powerful, very convincing, very important announcement. So I say truth telling because it's telling some very important things uh, like for us human beings, hey, love music and it will make your life longer or trust. And here is an announcement that uh, being a human being is good, be creative. And here's the trombone. Why do we say that trombone is so powerful? Uh, it was developed from the trumpet, from the slide trumpet during the Renaissance. And we uh, say that uh, it, it covers most the human voice range than any other instrument. So it's like kind of a humanized trumpet, how I say. And it was Beethoven, actually, who very first time they applied the trombone sound in public concerts until Beethoven, it was used by churches for representing uh, the human uh, life in the religious uh, beliefs. And here is the Beethovenian application when in symphony number no. five, he said, I don't have a program for the symphony, but I can convey a message starting with struggle and ending with victory, like his suggestion for us. And here is the victory part with the trombone. <laughs> very first time in music history in public concerts, the trombone appear. And very interesting because my high school band director was the favorite bass trombonist of Richard Strauss, who actually played on every instrument in a professional level, like he played second violin in the second Bartók string quartet premiere. He played the saxophone when the Hungarian opera performed Carmen, and he played first clarinet, first bassoon in the Ketchkemir Symphony, and he was a bass trombonist of the, of the symphony, of the opera and the Philharmonie in Budapest. So one day I asked him, what did you like the most about the trombone? And he said immediately, because in the orchestra, we could play softer than anyone else, and we could play louder than anyone else. You know, the contrasts are very important in performing arts, and their contrasts are a human feature. We go to bed, we wake up in the evening, we inhale the air, we outhale the air. We are having days and nights, everything is contrast. We born, we die. Contrasts are very important. And it was the powerful side of the trombone. And let me show you the opposite that Mr. Erne Kale, my band director, was telling that we also could play softer than anyone else in the orchestra. And this was a very attractive part of being a trombone player for decades in a professional life. Here is one example. And let me show you another one, because not only in Germany, but in other parts of the world, like in Italy and in opera, uh, that was the very first success for uh, uh, the composer Giuseppe Verdi uh, with the Nabucco. Before, he was not successful with the comedies and, and comic operas, but when he wrote the Nabucco, this is when his name started. And, and the very first notes that he wrote in his life uh, that made him successful that was written for trombones.
So I can just repeat, it's a glorious instrument because you can use it for everything. There is no any uh, challenges that the trombone couldn't play. It can play louder and softer than anyone, faster and slower than anyone. Can it represent, can melt together when any, any kind of uh, characteristics. And when we go back to the history of the trombone, there is a big answer for these old questions that might pop up. So it was developed from the slide trumpet and, and was growing and making bigger to bringing it to a lower vocal range that is the human voice range. So gradually from the Renaissance between 1350 and 1500, it was developed and you can see people like it, it's still growing from the slide trumpet, getting bigger on every pictures, as you can see that. Even a Hungarian hussar plays the, the trumpet on horseback. And he is the, the today's reconstructed version of the, the slide trumpet. Uh, that was the very first ancestor of, of the, the trombone. And he, during uh, the end of the Renaissance and the Baroque, the Zagbat was uh, growing out of the slide trumpet, that uh, French word means drawing out, meaning uh, like the sword uh, about the slide uh, that makes these special characteristics of the glissando that everyone uh, starts to play the trombone just enjoys because no other instruments except the strings can do that. So micro intervals, everything can be played. It is a Baroque one. And basically, in the church, they started to use the trombone representing the religious beliefs. And the, both the Gabrielis, Monteverdi, Heinrich Schütz loved to use it. Handel and Bach used in his cantatas, doubling the, the human voice, the main melodies. And Glück was the first who applied in his operas also the, the trombone. Here is how it looks today. And the, the, to make sure that the, the extension, the possibility of the musical vocabulary can be applied, uh, valves were added to it. Uh, first in 1800s, Heinrich Stölzl in Germany, and in 1839, Mr. Zottler in Leipzig added more valves to it to make the pipe longer, like here you can see the bass trombone with valves and the F trombone, it covers even longer range because the ventil, the valve makes it longer. And it's the double bass trombone with B flat and F uh, extension. So basically the valves are doing the same as with horns we talked about, that the pipe will be longer so it can cover longer um, the, the range of voice and more notes. So it can be used in any kind of the extension of, of the, the required sound range that we can imagine and think about. So it's an extremely special instrument. Number three is a very important number in the religion. You know, the Holy the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. And the Bach always uses three, four, as you could hear the, the Tannheiser overture. It's again on three, four. And the trombone was invented as the third most important brass instrument. The horn was the very first in history. The trumpet was the number two. And from the trumpet, the trombone as the large trumpet, it's the word meaning of trombone grew out. And we got to the 20th century when even jazz picked it up and uses it great success. So there is no any genre, there is no any kind of musical vocabulary that the trombone cannot represent. So I thought that I will introduce you a contemporary the, the trombone concerto rhapsody for bass trombone and the wind orchestra performed in Brazil by a wonderful soloist. And you can hear that he plays on a bass trombone, but he covers all the vocabularies. And Mr. Hidash, Friedrich Hidash composed it, and we start from the cadence to the end. <laughs> Thank you. 
just another glorious moment, glorious instrument, glorious music, glorious performance. And the Beethoven used it for a victory representation in his symphony number no. five that shows that we as human beings, we are not hopeless. Mortality is a big punishment or challenge, or I don't know how to call that, but we can demonstrate with music and musical instrument, writing beautiful art for our ear uh, that we are not hopeless and we are intelligent beings. And let's hope that one day we can connect another intelligent being and making our lives even more exciting that music is doing it and helping us to stop time and probably you will remember that music is so important especially with my hungarian accent and this is that i wish you all listen to more music love more music and don't forget that the glorious truth-telling trombone as one of the greatest instruments between all others that we have in human history i will be back <laughs>